right. We're walking, we're walking. You do your poopies. Oh, we turned on, we have light. We can see. We have light. For those of you who are new, I have a dog. She's big German Shepherd and big dogs make big poop. Now you might be wondering why I'm talking about poop. It's because something you have to deal with a lot when you have a dog. And when you have a dog, you gotta take them out all the time because they need to be taken out all the time. So you, sometimes you gotta go at one in the morning, sometimes you gotta go at five in the morning, times where there's not a lot of light and you wanna avoid stepping in poop. So what you do is you take out your phone, you turn on your flash and you scan the floor for landmines if you know what I mean. But that gets quite inconvenient. You're not, you don't always have your phone on you. It's not always charged. There's a bunch of reasons why your phone doesn't work for that. So you get a standalone light. Now you take your standalone light you go outside, you turn it on, you aim it at the area, you go do pick up the business, put it out, and you forget the light outside, and you come back in the morning and it's been ruined from the weather, or that it's you now the battery's screwed up, or something's wrong with it. So I made something for myself that would fix all those issues because I'm too irresponsible to own a flashlight. Now, most of my videos, I've been showing you guys somewhat of the progress of how I built things, and in this video, I'm not gonna show you the progress at all. I'm just going to explain to you how it works because we built the whole thing on stream. Now, I'm probably live on Twitch right now, so you should go check out my Twitch link. In this case, this looks like a pipe bomb. It might be, you never know, FBI, please don't open up. Before building it on the stream, we planned out the features that we need to have. The main ones were, the first thing is, it would have to decide if it was day or nighttime. If it was daytime, we never need the light to turn on because we have daylight. So we use a photo resistor sensor for that. All it does is check the light, and then you, depending on the light, it changes the amount of electricity that flows through the sensor. So if you put in 100 units of electricity and you're getting back 50, then it's 50% dark, let's say. And that's a weird number way of putting it, but it acts as a resistor, and using that value, you can figure out how strong the light is. So we actually have a number set for that that I figured out on my own, and then after I can show you going between that number up and down, what happens. After checking if it's day or night, what happens is it's going to check the override switch. And for that, I just made a switch with a really long extension cable. Ideally, if I hang this up in a tree or in a spot where I can't really reach all the time, I would hang this switch down and I would be able to manually turn it on or manually turn it off uh, and it would ignore everything else. It doesn't matter if it's day or night. It doesn't matter if it sees something or not. It would just turn on because I told it to with this switch. The last step after that is to check for motion. And if you actually looked at the pipe bomb when I was holding up earlier, you see this. This is a PIR sensor. This is what you use to detect motion. Inside the white lens of the PIR sensor, there's a sensor and there's two sides to it. And both of these sides look for heat radiation. And when there's a difference in this two and it transfers over and it sees that some kind of radiation uh, differential between the two and it's moving around and all that, it actually figures out that there has to be motion in the shot and it declares that and lets you know and it returns like a value of like, let's say one instead of zero. When a warm body like a human passes by, it first intercepts on one half of the PIR sensor, which causes a positive differential change between the two. When the warm body leaves the sensing area, the reverse happens. So what happens is, like it says, there's two sensors, it sees a warm body, goes to the other sensor, and then leaves the shot and it saw that something just crossed because the heat radiation just went from this one to this one and left. It's kind of like those thermal cameras that they use in movies and military stuff and uh, honestly I don't even know why they use it. I guess to check how many people are in a room without having to go in the room. When it comes to the actual hardware on the device, it's pretty simple. We got the PIR sensor, a couple LEDs tucked in there. You can't really see them, but these are all status LEDs like are we daylight? Are we nighttime? Are we ready to check for motion? Are we being overridden? Uh, is the battery charged? Just a bunch of status lights there. That's not really important. Then we got a bunch of cables. We got a relay tucked under this tape and then we got an Arduino exposed here. You can see it right here. Then I got the USB cable connected now because I'm just playing with it on, with you guys. And then under there we got a module that we added on stream which lets us plug in wall power into this. So we can leave this out forever if we wanted to, or we can unplug it. And now we'll run off the battery, which can run for like a couple hours. So ideally you would set this up in a spot, plug it into the wall power, leave it there, use it for let's say a week. And then you decide, oh, I want to try this other spot. You just unplug it, hang it up in the other spot. And now you got two, three days worth of 
battery on that and then you can always return it to its home station or whatever but uh, it allows me to forget the light outside and not have to pay for it the next day when I go outside and there's no light and I stop and poop. Now to show you how it actually works, right now it's on. As you can see that tiny little white light right here is telling us that it's daytime and it's too bright in the room. So I'm gonna go behind the camera here and I'm going to just lower the LED a bit and at one point, and now it's switched to green. Green notifies us that it's ready to detect for motion. So if I actually swipe my hand in front, it'll turn on, it works. That's all you gotta do. Now we went from a white light on the top to a green light notifying us that it's ready to detect for motion. And as you can see, it's turning on. If I swipe my hand in front of it, it turns on. Now we gotta wait for it to turn off, so I have to step out of the motion range. Let me take you through it one more time. Green light, we're good to go. It's not too dark, it's not too bright. If I go here and just change to a brighter window on my computer, turned it on by accident, give it a sec. Now we're in white mode, it should stay in white mode because it is definitely too bright in the room right now to detect for motion. But if I take my mouse here and I go and dark again, give it a sec, green, swipe, it's on, it works, magical. If you find a big interest in building these things and you want to know more about the electronics but you're afraid it might be complicated, the code might be complicated, any of that stuff, please don't be. We got a couple videos coming out this week explaining and showing you guys how to build things from absolute scratch, like I'll take you through the code, which I hate doing because it's nerd shit, and then I'm going to show you how I 3D printed a case and I can actually show you right here one of the current in progress projects, this is going to be an alarm clock where we'll have buttons on top and you'll press the buttons and set your time and do a whole bunch of that stuff and then tuck the electronics all in there. So look forward to that stuff. Again, if you want to see me build these things live, just hit up twitch.tv slash my name. I'm not going to say it. You can just copy paste it from my YouTube channel. Thanks for being here. See you tomorrow.